Hello! Recently I've been getting a video titled Does Capitalism Exploit Workers by Learn Liberty, recommended to me by YouTube. Uh, I ignored it for a while, but after having it always be in my recommended for over a month, I have no idea why, I couldn't resist clicking on it. It's the standard liberal propaganda we've all encountered before, but I'm in the mood for some debunking, so uh, let's get started. Karl Marx famously thought that a capitalist economy promotes the systematic exploitation of workers. Yes, yes it does. For Marx, this idea was based on a labor theory of value, which most scholars today reject. This is a phrase I hear a lot, but I've never seen any conclusive proof as to why. I have yet to come across any decent critique, let alone debunking, of the labor theory of value. Bourgeois economics is much less a science and much more a framework for the ideological reinforcement of capitalism. They're the modern equivalent of the priests of the Middle Ages that told serfs feudalism was the natural order of things. Nevertheless, many still agree with Marx's basic claim that capitalism is inherently exploitative. They simply define exploitation in broader and less contentious terms. Instead of thinking about exploitation as involving the forced extraction of surplus value from labor, contemporary philosophers define it as taking unfair advantage of others' vulnerability. You just rewarded what happens and made it seem more rosy. Capitalism does exploit workers, capitalists do extract surplus value from the workers, and workers don't get back the full value of their labor with each wage. Without the extraction of surplus value, there is no profit and no capitalism. This isn't taking unfair advantage of someone's vulnerability. This literally is the forced extraction of surplus value from workers. Empirical evidence supports this, as productivity has massively increased, but wages have remained stagnant. And defined in this way, Many philosophers think that contemporary capitalism is rife with exploitation, with economically powerful capitalists taking unfair advantage of workers' vulnerability in order to maximize their profit. So, what should we make of this argument? Is capitalism exploitative? Yes. Yes, it is. And what's the alternative? Socialism. You know, where workers own and run the means of production for human needs rather than for profit where production is aimed at the enrichment and improvement of all of society, and not just a small clique of incredibly wealthy individuals? Well first, it's absolutely correct that many capitalists want to exploit workers. They want to pay as low a wage as possible, and get as much work out of workers as possible, in order to maximize profit. But the fact that other capitalists also want to exploit workers in this way, makes it difficult for any of them to do so. What? This sounds like the standard bullshit argument of, oh, if you don't like working here, you can always go somewhere else. First of all, no matter how high a worker is paid, he is still nonetheless exploited. A part of the value the worker produces has to be taken by the capitalist so profit is realized. Without exploitation, there is no profit, period. Also, in which universe do you live where capitalists compete for workers? Please, please don't bring that up. Please, you seem like such a nice guy. This is because competitive pressure forces capitalists to pay workers close to the value of what those workers produce, whether they want to or not. That's why sweatshop workers in Bangladesh are paid next to nothing, right? If you try to pay someone less than they're worth, someone else will offer them more, because they can profit by doing so. Ding 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 ding! Called it. Called it. He mentioned that bullshit argument. Alright, the argument that you can just go somewhere else if you're not happy with your pay is absolute nonsense. There's this concept called the reserve army of labor. Basically, capitalism inherently creates and benefits off of unemployment, because if there's a massive amount of unemployed people and conditions get bad enough, these unemployed people will accept pretty much any work, no matter how low wages are, how dangerous working conditions are, and how long the workday is. Not only this, but capitalists always point to the reserve army of labor in order to scare still employed workers into submission. Basically, don't ask for better conditions, higher pay, etc., because I can easily fire you and hire someone else. Cue the shitty dollar bill example he'll give. Imagine you're in an auction, bidding against others for a dollar. Of course, you'd like to pay as little as possible for that dollar. But if someone else was bidding 60 cents for it, wouldn't it be worth your while to bid 62? And wouldn't someone else then bid 64 and so on? In a competitive marketplace, that same process leads capitalists to pay workers close to the value of what they produce, not because they want to, but because they have to. Jesus Christ, workers aren't some vintage pieces of furniture or something. No one bids on workers because you can always easily replace them if they get too, uh, 
a rowdy, let's say. Also, again, workers are paid close to their value. That's why Congolese mine workers are paid practically nothing, right? Or Peruvian farmers or construction workers in Qatar. Oh God, it's, it's Qatar, Qatar. Qatar makes it sound like, like it's a disease, like the inflammation. The second point to keep in mind about capitalism and exploitation is this. Even when exploitative or unfair exchanges do take place, the institutions of a free market ensure that they will at least usually be mutually beneficial. Oh, Jesus. Mutually beneficial, huh? Mm. Let's hear him out. Because the exchanges are voluntary. Gah. Fuck. Okay, sure, voluntary. It's like a catchphrase for these people. Look, work for me for shitty low pay in a shitty working environment for half the day or starve isn't voluntary, it's a threat. This isn't much of a choice, this is essentially coercion. As I've already mentioned, people can't just go somewhere else, and employment is hard to come by in the first place. Also, mutually beneficial is such a morally bankrupt statement. If you were dying of thirst in the middle of the desert, and some guy comes up to you, offers you a bottle of water, and tells you that if you take it, you owe him a million dollars, then it would be considered a voluntary, mutually beneficial transaction for these people. Anyone with any sense would see how messed up the situation I just gave is, though. In the end, it's neither voluntary nor mutually beneficial. I'm gonna go ahead and skip the really fucked up example he gives, because it really doesn't add anything. To be honest, it hurts his argument even more, but whatever. Markets aren't perfect. No, no they're not. In fact, they really, really suck. But whether or not you think capitalism is exploitative, what you and I think doesn't matter. It is an inherent, objective fact that capitalism is exploitative. No amount of ideological posturing and twisting of words will change that fact. You need to ask, what's the alternative? Socialism, you know, where workers own and run the means of production for human needs rather than... Oh, I said this already, didn't I? Huh. Enjoy the point he's going to make right now, where he basically argues for socialism without even realizing it. The usual suggestion is political regulation and control. But if our concern is to minimize exploitation, we need to ask whether this alternative really makes sense. After all, citizens are in a position of tremendous vulnerability relative to the state, and lobbyists, bureaucrats, and elected officials will often be tempted to exploit that vulnerability for their own private gain. Think of the way in which our political institutions subsidize large agribusinesses, bail out auto companies, cartelize the banking industry through the Federal Reserve System, and so on. All of these policies benefit the interests of the economically powerful and politically well-connected at the expense of ordinary citizens. That's not a free market at work. Oh geez, and the fantasies begin. Look, capitalism needs a state to survive, and it's in the best interest of the capitalist class to meddle and lobby the government to do their bidding as it means more profit for them. The free market is a fantasy that would be horrific if it were ever realized. That's big government. Oh god. Alright, watch him make another point that he doesn't realize is actually for socialism. And politics is unlike markets, in that political exchanges aren't voluntary. When the government wants to use your money to bail out GM, you don't have the right to say no. And this means there's no guarantee that the exchange will be mutually beneficial. When politics is involved, one party's gain usually comes at someone else's expense. Politicians gain from the contributions they receive from big business, and big business gains from the favors they receive from government. This is... This is standard capitalist practice. This isn't crony capitalism. This isn't corporatism. It's just capitalism. Sure, those favors have a cost, but because government has the power of coercion, it can force third parties to pay that cost. Those who can afford political influence get the benefits, and those who cannot afford it suffer the consequences. This is how politics works. And it's not because we have bad people in office and need to get nicer people in. It's because of the structural nature of politics. Because the state has the power to impose its decisions by force on the public. Just hoping that the state will use its power on behalf of the vulnerable isn't enough. We need Revolution. Revolution.